Does ChatGPT take everything that we know about violin playing on the internet and put it in one place? We're going to find that out together. My name is Eric Soberger, head of violin at Tonebase. So one of the first questions that we typically would ask on learning to play the violin is, how do I get started on playing the violin? Let's see what ChatGPT says. To start playing the violin, choose a quality instrument. Find a qualified teacher or online tutorials. Get the right equipment, rosin, strings, and shoulder rest. Practice regularly and consistently. Learn proper posture and technique. Start with simple songs and gradually increase difficulty. So far, this is very good advice. What would ChatGPT recommend, though, on the process? For varying levels, what would you recommend for a practice schedule on the violin? Wow. This is amazing. It's giving us times that it recommends for each different skill level. It looks like beginner, intermediate, and advanced. What I find interesting is how it breaks down each particular part in terms of what it thinks the focus should be on. However, there is one issue. The amount of time that you should practice really depends on your goals, not necessarily whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. So let's refine this a little bit more. Could you go into more detail with regards to each skill level? Okay, here we go. So it looks like it's being divided in the same way. The practice time is the same. However, the focus seems to be a little bit more detailed. For instance, in this case for beginners, proper hand positioning, bowing technique, finger placement, and the tips use a qualified teacher or online resources and be patient with yourself. Intermediate, we're seeing something quite similar. Expanding your technique through more pieces, musical expression and theory, and more styles and techniques to broaden your skill set. Practice journals are great ideas too. For advanced, going for some of the most challenging works and really just focusing more on the same ideas and gaining more inspiration. So far, the advice is generally quite good, but it's also very vague still. It's, I mean, it, it gives you some general ideas, which are very good concepts and one should always pay attention to. But I really want to go a little bit further. For a violinist wanting to become a professional, how many hours would you recommend practicing each week or day? That's vastly different. Four to five hours is a huge jump from what it called advanced violin playing. I find that very interesting. Why is it differentiating between advanced and professional so much? It's also suggesting getting more opportunities and networking. I think a lot of this advice is also just to try to build a successful career as a musician. I would say if you're pursuing a professional career as a violinist, you don't necessarily have to do four to five hours a day. You can do, you know, two to three, but it really depends on each person. Every single person is unique. And that's the hard part of asking a general question. ChatGPT also can't give a very specific answer. Um, I would say that's one of the great weaknesses with ChatGPT right now is it can't give you a very personalized program based on... Hmm, yeah, can't even say that. <laughs> so let's go in depth. How do you recommend practicing scales on the violin? Starting slow is always good advice. That's something that applies to basically anything on the violin. Now, focusing on technique, posture, bowing technique, and how you put, place your hands uh, is very important. And, of course, you have to practice with both hands and vary your practicing and metronomes. Something that a lot of great violinists talk about using, but actually fewer people use than you might think. Incorporate into pieces. That's very important. Shmuel Ashkenazi talks about that sometimes, the great violinist. And listen, pay close attention to the sound you're producing and strive for an in-tune sound. As violinists, we always struggle with trying to play as in-tune as possible. So let's see what ChatGPT thinks about intonation. Are the different systems of playing in tune on the violin? And how would you recommend working on playing more in tune? 
Equal temperaments used on the piano, so that's very important for violinists to learn. Just intonation, of course, using pure harmonic ratios. A lot of intonation you can just use ratios to explain. And historically, a lot of different instruments have been tuned very differently. Um, and historical temperaments are very interesting to observe. So some very good general advice here. Listen, playing with a tuner can be dangerous depending on how it can stop you from listening and just looking at something, but it can be useful. Playing with musicians, other musicians, can always be very interesting and varying your practicing. So generally, some nice advice here. However, did ChatGPT just miss the most important part? Expressive intonation. Expressive intonation is when you play notes slightly sharper or flatter to really bring out the intensity and emotion of that music. Since ChatGPT is text-based, unfortunately, it can't really give us demonstrations of playing on the violin. And you hear all the different timbres and imperfections, which are actually more important than actually hearing perfectly in tune playing a lot of the time. Training our ear is a lifelong process. And it's something that ChatGPT alludes to very well, but it's something you really have to work on listening to in order to really understand what it means. I want to share a little clip from Shmuel Ashkenazi talking about intonation because it's such an important part of our journey in violin playing and I think he says it so well having spent an entire lifetime working on it. You know for, for me personally the last 40 years or more practically all that I practiced was intonation and fingerings uh, but there are a lot of uh, shortcuts. The shortcuts are to know harmony and to know what the note needs to, you need to miss in which direction. And so then mm. you miss intelligently and then the, the missing becomes a virtue. It sounds even more beautiful yeah. if it's higher. But you need to know what notes need to be higher, what notes can be higher, what notes can be lower, and what notes to be, have to be perfect. Was that all learned from experience, or is there any place or book or system that you kind of subscribe um, to? The, the very, very primitive, shortcut, unsophisticated rule of thumb, which will improve anybody's intonation immediately, overnight, is that when you play a single voice, that doesn't mean unaccompanied, it means a single yeah. voice, yeah or fast, your half steps should be very close, and when you play fast, your whole steps should be a little bit big. Does that, what about the whole step, the half steps when you're playing fast? They should be extremely small. Extremely? Extremely small. But they should be small or extremely small even when you play slow, if it's unaccompanied. Mm. If it's accompanied, you need to play vertically, and that means that most of the time, the major third needs to be low and perfect, and the minor third needs to be high and perfect. That's oversimplification, but that's, that will take care of most notes. All the other notes need to be perfect. They just cannot be high or low. <laughs> but even those notes, there is what is called cheating, and uh, sometimes it helps to cheat. When the major third is on top, it sounds very unattractively low, if, if it's to be in tune. Mm -hmm. And so if there is only one note underneath it, that is either the fifth or the root, if you don't exaggerate, it's good to play it out of tune sharp in order to enhance the flavor yeah. of the top voice. But if you don't do that, it's good enough. But if you do that, I think it's a little bit better. As long as it's not exaggerated. So all the ear is the guide. It's always listening. It's always coming back to that. Uh, yeah, but it's also taste. And you, you evaluate whether this intonation is more important than this intonation. And sometimes it is, sometimes it yeah. isn't. Uh, there, is, there is, for instance, an example in the Tchaikovsky concerto when you have... Yeah, if you play that F sharp in tune, it's very unattractively low together with the open A. That sounds in tune, right? Yeah. So listen. 
Sounds very unattractive. Mm -hmm. If you play it attractively, it's not in tune. That sounds very nice, but, but that doesn't. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is either play the first one in tune and play it higher and alone. Mm -hmm. Or you play both of them alone. And then it's not annoying. This is annoying, but this is not. Because the other company is more than an octave below. Yeah. So. Yeah. You see? But if you play it very well in tune, it's not satisfying. Yeah. That's satisfying. But that's not. There's really quite a difference when somebody's lived and tried out different passages and really experimented with trying to get intonation that sounds the most musical. ChatGPT gives us so many great ideas and things to work off of. But I think the limitation with ChatGPT is it's a starting point. We really have to explore the details on our own. It's doing a great job of putting together a lot of the knowledge on the internet. But really, sound is something you can't put into words in quite the same way as listening to it does. So, with that being said, ChatGPT, do you have any final words for us on the art of violin playing? Guys, this is shocking, so please write your comments below. Would love to get your thoughts on the advice that ChatGPT is giving. Please click on the notification bell and click subscribe. We would love to have you join us as we create more videos. And also, please join us on Tonebase, where you can see many of the great artists of our time share their thoughts on music. Mm -hmm.